Good morning and welcome to another digital devotional. So grateful that you're with us and uh, learning together now as we journey through Mark. We work our way through Mark and the gospel uh, that moves rather rapidly. And so thank you so much for being with us this morning and this day. And so as we get ready to turn our attention to the word of God, I invite you to open with prayer with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how good and great you are that you would come take on our flesh, bear our sin, experience our existence, and suffer and die innocently for us. And we learn of your life in the Gospels. We are taught of your life in the Gospels. We are shown your life and your mission and ministry in the Gospels. And I pray, especially now, as we give our attention for these extended weeks through the Gospel of Mark, I pray, O oh Lord, that you would speak and teach, that you would grip our hearts, and that you would uh, make us to be new creations in you, O Lord, as we by faith surrender and follow and serve you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the Gospel of Mark this morning, we'll be considering chapter 1 of Mark, verses 9 through 13. And so uh, let's, let's hear these, these events. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels ministered to him. Now this is fascinating because uh, John is the, the forerunner of Jesus. He prepares the way. We looked at that yesterday. And Jesus now, and this is maybe months, perhaps a, a year into the ministry of John as he's offering this baptism of repentance, Jesus comes to John. And, and per perhaps you might recall that in the verses we looked at yesterday, John said that, that uh, uh, the one who's coming after me is mightier than I. I'm not even worthy to bend down and untie his shoes. And, and so here comes the one that, that is to follow John, the one who uh, the way is being made ready for. Jesus comes and he's baptized by John. And in some of the other gospels, uh, John is, is hesitant. He's, he's, he's not sure that this is the right thing. And Jesus says, I must be baptized by you. And so Jesus undergoes baptism. Now, it's interesting when we think about baptism because we usually link baptism in, in, in for us and in the practice of the body of Christ, baptism is linked with belief in Jesus. And so why would Jesus need to be baptized to believe in himself or as we oftentimes think of baptism as uh, identifying ourselves with the death of Jesus for sin? And so is Jesus being baptized because of some sort of sin? And and that is not the case here. Jesus undergoes the baptism of John because in doing so, Jesus fully identifies himself with our humanity. Remember, this is not, uh, this is not Jesus in a, as, as kind of God and man, and, and, and he, he's man, but he kind of becomes God. No, Jesus is God who experiences the fullness of what it means to be humanity. And so Jesus undergoing the baptism of John is Jesus, uh, at the beginning of his ministry, way of identifying fully with you and with me in our humanity. Jesus is saying, I am fully like you, with one exception, without sin. And when we undergo baptism, we usually hear the words that we are buried with Christ in his death and rise, raised with him in his life. And so Jesus' baptism, Jesus baptism is, uh, is, is a way he identifies with us. And so Jesus, he, he suffers, he dies, but he becomes the means to our life. And so immediately after he's baptized, he goes, the, the, the words of the Father uh, confirm that he is, is, is the one. And so the, the prophecies of Jesus coming then are confirmed in the announcements of John. 
And then in the public declaration of the Father's voice resonating from heaven, you are my beloved Son as the Holy Spirit descends upon him. And so we have the Trinity. Believe this. We have the Trinity of God present at Jesus' baptism where the Son is, is endowed by the Spirit and confirmed by the Father. Friends, this is what Jesus has done for us. This is the beginning of his ministry. And so immediately he goes off now in the power of the Holy Spirit by the, the confirmation and the calling of the Father goes off into the wilderness and endures temptation. He is plagued and beleaguered by Satan as Satan tries to get him to, to not consent to the plan and the purpose of God. And we know uh, in, in the other gospels, John's is very brief. Very quick, John, uh, Lucas, or I'm sorry, Mark is almost in a in a uh, hurry to get to other things as he's setting the pieces on the table, and so it says immediately he was driven and tempted by Satan for 40 days in the wilderness, and it says he was there with the animals and the angels were ministering to him. Jesus, in the in in the in the wilderness as he's tempted is now also fully identified with the creation as the he, he ministers and is surrounded by the animals and the angels come and minister to him. And so, friends, when we, when we look at Jesus, when, when we consider Jesus and we consider that he uh, came to be the Savior, we need not look for another. There is not another Messiah. There is another, another Savior. These, these these events in Mark particularly ring true with the, the teaching of Jesus as it's recorded in John when it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the Savior for, the human, for humanity, for the, for the people of the world, and so that all would believe in him. And so we need not look to another. And when we do look to Jesus, we are looking to someone who is fully adequate, fully capable, fully fully uh, 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 able and, and powerful to do all that we need. And so friends, this day, and especially as we open up the, the early pages of the Gospel of Mark, I pray and, and, and I hope that you'd be encouraged with this. And, and if you if you have not really turned to Jesus, if you if you've kind of dabbled with Jesus, uh, I'd encourage you to really lean more deeply into Jesus. If you know Jesus, friends, you need not to weary or worry that somehow Jesus will will wear out or not be able to fulfill his plans and purposes for he has become not only fully identified to our existence as human beings, but he has triumphed. He has become victorious over not only sin, and death, but of the devil. And therefore, in our lives, we are secure. No wonder, no wonder the Apostle Paul say that if anyone is crucified with Christ, uh, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life we now live in the flesh and in the body, we live by faith in the Son of God. And so, friends, that's the adequacy of Jesus. We need not look to another. Would you look to Jesus today? Would you ask him to guide you and direct you in his plans and purposes this day and know that he is fully able and fully capable? Let us pray. God, how good and faithful you are, and we know that you are sure and true. And we thank you that in your son, Jesus Christ, you fully understand what it is to be human. And not only that, but you understand the predicament and the pain and the suffering and the heartache we are in as those who are separated from you because of our sin. We thank you for your son, Jesus who died in our place, who suffered um, our, our condemnation and bore um, our due punishment. And Lord, by faith, we trust in him. We identify ourselves with him by faith, knowing that Jesus is our righteousness, our glory, and our standing before you, our heavenly father. Would you guide us this day and grip us with this truth and this reality that it would be settled in our heart and in our soul forever, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've been encouraged with this word. I hope you've been informed and, and educated with this word and, and empowered to go and follow and serve Jesus faithfully this day. God bless you and, and let, leave some comments. Let me know um, how this word ministers to your heart. Uh, also, turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on, on this uh, really interesting, exciting journey through the Gospel of Mark. And uh, so thank you, thankful to, that you're with us today. So may the Lord bless you.